I want to show you a few things in DaVinci Resolve that have really made me a more efficient editor. So if you're just jumping into DaVinci Resolve, maybe it's your first editor, or maybe you're hopping over from a different editor to DaVinci Resolve, or perhaps you've been in DaVinci Resolve for a while and you just want to learn something new and this video uh, caught your eye. Whatever the reason is, I'm glad you're here and I hope you find something helpful in this video. So that said, let's go ahead and jump into it, jump into DaVinci Resolve and talk about the first thing and that is stacked timelines. Now I use stacked timelines for a couple of reasons, so I'll get to that in a minute, but first we gotta show you how to actually enable it. So to do that, you go over here just above the time code and click this little icon here. And then under timeline view options, you just select the first one, which is stacked timelines. So when you do that, you get this little tab right here that shows you the timeline that you're on. So all footage is in orange. And then if you wanted to add another timeline, you just click this plus button and then you can either select a timeline or create a new timeline. And to create a new timeline, all you would do is just drag footage here and then that creates a new timeline. So you can do that or you can select a timeline here and we'll choose selects. So this is the second timeline that I typically do in a project for a simple project like this. And what this is, is basically me going through all the footage and selecting the shots that I really like that I want to use for the edit. And what I'll typically do first is just bring them up to a second video track. So it's a really easy visual reference for me to see all the tracks that I want to use in this edit. And then next up, we'll add another timeline here. And then I'm going to just go to the working timeline that I've got. And then we can go balance between the different tabs here for the different timelines, which is helpful. But to make that even more helpful, we can go over here to the right, just next to this mixer, if the mixer is enabled, to this little plus button right here. And what that does is it allows you to basically open up a second timeline just below. So what I like to do is I'll close this selects button down and open it up here. So that way I can see my selects and my working edit here. So it's super helpful to kind of get that visual reference. Now to take it one step further though, the select still looks a little busy and a little hard to kind of understand. So what I like to do is create another timeline of my selects and then do a selects combined timeline. And what I do is I will highlight all of my selects, copy them, and then paste them into this new timeline. So now that I've got this other timeline, I've got all of these gaps here and it's just kind of a pain to like search through and it's like a really long timeline and everything is really small. And if I wanna zoom in on different clips, then I have to scroll a lot to find the other clips. So there's a really easy trick to do that. You just go up to this edit tab right here and then go to delete gaps. And all that does is deletes all the gaps between all of my selects and then I can play them back and find them a lot easier. I can zoom in and kind of see what the clips are, which is really nice. And so if I'm working on my edit and I want to pull in another clip, I can just drag it from this timeline right on top of the working edit. And it just makes it a lot more efficient pulling from this timeline as opposed to jumping to a different tab and copying and pasting. All right, real quick, another reason how I'd use stack timelines is for like documentary work. So for documentary work, what I like to do for uh, for the actual interviews is I like to create a timeline for the different interviews of the, the different talents. So that way it kind of keeps me organized and I can sync all the audio and everything and pull from that. So if I am at a particular part of an interview and you know, it, it cuts off and, and I watch it a couple days later and I'm like, oh, what, what came after that? Well, I could go to find that in the media pool and, and, and do it that way and hear that. But if I actually want to pull the audio and pull the video from that track and add it in to the timeline, it's a lot easier to just pull it from this other timeline here where my audio and everything is synced. So the real easy way to do that is what I do is I just go to workspace, data burn in, go to source timecode, and this just puts timecode overlaid on the actual track. So on the interview, I'll just disable this and I can see, okay, start timecode at 1146. So I'll just go over here and try to find the time of the interview. And then I'll just play that back and just listen out for what he says after that, just to see if there's something else that I wanted to add in. So it's really nice to be able to reference the timeline with the interview with the synced audio, because when I use timecode, it's really quick to just find the track there. It takes, you know, 
the seconds to find that. And then I can pull and cut and paste whatever I wanted to uh, from this actual timeline here of the full interview with the synced audio and everything. That way I don't have to go find the audio track and, and go find the time code and all that stuff all over again. So that's just another way that I use stack timelines while I am editing. So earlier I showed you a way to delete all the gaps by going up to edit and then deleting gaps. But as you can see here, I've got a keyboard shortcut, command G to actually do that for me instead of having to go up to the menu. So if I just on my keyboard hit command G, it actually deletes all those clips for me. And that's the next thing I wanna talk about and that is keyboard customization. So if you go up here to the main DaVinci Resolve menu and click on keyboard customization, you can start to customize the keyboard any way you want. So if you're moving over from Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or something like that, then you kind of translate the different keyboard shortcuts to what you're used to, to be able to make you a little bit more efficient. Now I've made a bunch of keyboard shortcuts here. I'm not gonna show you everything. I'm just gonna show you some of the ones that I use all the time and the most frequently. So for example, probably the most common keyboard shortcuts that I use are under the trim section and under ripple and you've got end to playhead and start to playhead. So what does that do? Basically it allows me to, wherever my playhead is, I can delete a clip and then move it all the way over to the left or to the right, depending on. So what I mean by that is beforehand, I would have to click B for the blade, click where I wanted to cut, click A on the keyboard and then click on the clip and then hit delete and then delete the gap right here by clicking the gap and then hitting delete. Or if I wanted to save a little bit more time, I could highlight that clip at the cut and then hit shift delete and that does a ripple delete. Well, instead of doing all those steps, I can just navigate to wherever I wanna go and then hit W and that deletes the clip and does the ripple delete for me. Or if I wanna delete everything to the right of the playhead, I just hit E and that deletes everything to the right of the playhead and moves the timeline over for me. So it's a much more efficient way of deleting footage as opposed to using the blade tool and then selecting it and hitting delete and all that stuff. Another really helpful keyboard shortcut that I use a lot is the razor tool and I've assigned that to the letter Q. So what that does is it basically creates a cut on the entire timeline. If you don't wanna have that cut on every single track but just a particular clip, all you do is click on that clip first and then hit Q and then you have that done. So if you wanna use that uh, part of a clip for some special effect or maybe you wanna punch in or whatever, it's really helpful for that. Now, two other shortcuts that I use all the time are auto aligning clips. And this is really helpful for interviews. If you have a multi-cam shoot or maybe you have a, a, a video file with two audio tracks or whatever, this is really helpful. So in this example right here, I have one video track and two audio tracks. And beforehand, I would have to right click and then go to auto align clips and then either auto align based on time code or based on waveform. So what I did is I just created shortcuts. So Control T is for basing on time code and Control W is to auto align based on waveform. Now another useful shortcut I have assigned is option F and basically this allows me to select clips forward on all tracks and I've also got one to select forward just on this track. So in practice, basically if I hit option F, whatever clip I'm on, it selects that and everything to the right. So I can move everything over if I needed to or whatever. And this is really helpful for like, especially like my YouTube videos, if I do some kind of title transition or something like that, and I need to move things around, it's a really easy for me to just grab all the clips to the right, put that title in and then move my clips back over to kind of get it to where I want. Another one that I really like is shift D and basically on the edit timeline that it disables all the grades and everything so that I can play it back smoothly which is really nice. Speaking of playing back, I use J, K, and L. So L is to play forward, K is to stop, and J is to reverse. So as I'm editing, I don't have to leave my keyboard when I'm making cuts and stuff and not have to use my mouse as much as possible, which is really nice. It just makes me a lot more efficient. So those are just some of the keyboard shortcuts that I use. Definitely you can customize exactly how you want, but it's really nice that you have the ability to customize and there's so many customizable options uh, for uh, DaVinci Resolve. So I use these all the time, super helpful. Definitely go and explore and maybe check out other videos or maybe hop on the internet and see what people are using. And uh, I don't know, maybe some of those will help you out. All right, next up is Power Bins. And this is such a useful tool to have in DaVinci Resolve. Now, basically what a Power Bin is, is it allows you to have whatever that you have in your Power Bin, you can open up into any project and you don't have to go search whatever folder that, whatever that asset is in 
to be able to use. So I use those all the time for sound effects or logos or whatever. So for example, like some of my client assets, I've got like client logos right here. So I can pull those into different projects and not have to go out to any folder. And you know, if I'm editing on the go, I've got all these assets in my power bin on my desktop, on my laptop, and I've got them backed up as well. So that way, if I'm editing on the go, I know I always have these assets in my power bin ready to go. So I've got overlays, I've got sound effects, all that kind of stuff to be able to use for my projects. Now, speaking of sound effects, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Artlist. If you have a need for sound effects, music, even stock footage, or even templates and stuff like that, definitely head over to Artlist because they have so many great quality sound effects, music, high quality footage shot by professionals, for professionals. I use Artlist all the time for my client work and for my YouTube stuff. I love their licensing terms. The licensing is really easy. It's unlimited downloads and you can use that asset for any project for commercial use, content creation, whatever the case may be. Now they have a bunch of different plans to choose from, whether you're just looking for sound effects and music, maybe just footage and templates, or what I would recommend is going for the Artlist Max plan, either Max Social or Max Pro, depending on your needs. For me personally, I use the Max Pro plan because not only do I do YouTube content creation, but I also do client work for my main job. That's how I make a living. And with the Max Pro plan, it allows me to use all these assets, sound effects, music footage, all that stuff. The licensing terms are super easy. All the footage and music and sound effects are really high quality. Anytime I pick a song, my clients are super happy with the track. So they're really high quality tracks. Sound effects are really good to really spice up your videos and just add a little bit more of that special sauce with sound design to just really enhance that viewer's experience. So highly recommend you go check out Artlist if you have any any music, sound effects, footage, or templates, or all the above needs, go check them out and be sure to use the link in the description down below. So next up, the last thing I wanna talk about is using clip colors in your timeline. Now for me, using clip colors is a great way of staying visually organized on a timeline. Now for example, we got this timeline here and this is just a mini documentary that I edited. And in that, I use color coding based on different interviews. So each interview has its own color. So this interview right here is all the same interview as this right here, because it's all green here. Then I've got orange, which is a different interview. This yellow is a different interview. So as you can see, like each interview has its own color coding. And this is really nice because the, uh, the director actually sent over some editor notes for me. And with those editor notes, they picked out sound bites that they really liked from the different interviews and they color coded those, which was really helpful. So what I did is I just matched the color coding as best as I could to the editor notes. And this just allowed me to be much more organized visually. Additionally, I have songs color coded to tan right here. I've got some sound effects color coded to chocolate. So it just makes everything a lot more easy for me to see visually to stay organized. Not to change a clip color, it's really easy. All you do is right click, go to clip color and then change it to whatever clip color that you want. So those are just a few of the things that make me a more efficient editor in DaVinci Resolve. These are things that I use on every single project. If you found anything in this video helpful, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Maybe hit the like button to uh, support that algorithm and um, keep the conversation going. I, I, I know there's stuff that I didn't mention just because this, I'm trying to keep this video under 20 minutes long or 10 minutes, I don't know. But um, let me know down in the comments, keep the conversation going and you know, maybe leave your favorite keyboard shortcut or your you know favorite editing technique in DaVinci Resolve that I didn't mention here. So uh, keep the conversation going, just be nice in the comments and um, all that to be said, hope you have a good day. Appreciate you watching and hope to see you in the next one. Peace.